everybody. Welcome to Muse TV. I'm Mike Sandoval, and we have a great guest today. Tonight, premiering on Nat Geo Trafficked with Marie, Mariana Van Zeller. Her today. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. This show, and I mentioned to you off air, is probably some of the best investigative journalism that I've seen in some time. Oh, I... I what? <laughs> Thank what you. do you equate it to? Because it's like the stories are so good and they're things that people have not really heard about or learned about, really. What was the question? Sorry, I have a, a, a situation that is very COVID 2020 situation, which is my son in online schooling and my husband working right next to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's what we go through. Um, <laughs> What was it like trying to find these new types of stories to investigate, uh -huh. especially since a lot of people don't, a lot of the topics are people that people have heard, things that people heard about, but really didn't know the inside story of them. It wasn't hard to find the topics. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by black markets. They're all around us. And that was one of the things that I discovered while doing this show. But also, uh, you know, the amount of... Uh, uh, just, you know, substances and, and uh, of, of things that are trafficked and that belong, that are sort of part of these black markets. So the hard part isn't finding the subjects. Uh, the difficulty and the big, the biggest challenge was actually gaining uh, access into these worlds. And I, I'd say that's actually the hardest part of my job and my team's uh, job is, you know, it's knocking on doors, it's making phone calls, it's, uh, hours and hours, months and months, sometimes even years of uh, hard work to get into. You know, we get one yes, uh, and out of that one yes, there's dozens and dozens of no's that go along with that. So um, it's not easy, for sure. Um, and you definitely put yourself into some dangerous situ situations as well, especially like in this first up, uh, well, pretty much in every episode. <laughs> it seems like uh, putting yourself in some dangerous situations to get the story. Uh, how do you feel about that? Like, because it is journalism. That's what a journalist is supposed to do is get into that. Is there any uh, fear? Uh, I would say that no, no story is uh, 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 worth uh, a life, you know? So uh, we very much try to minimize the risk. There's all this security and plan, security meetings that we have and planning uh, that we have ahead of time before we even hit the ground. Um, however, you know, things are never what we, you know, plans are the first things to go when you are doing this kind of reporting. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the most important thing, yes, there were moments where there was fear involved. Uh, there were there are lots of very uncomfortable moments. Uh, but as long as you stay calm and as long as you show the people that you're with that you trust and respect them, uh, in general, you are trusted and respected back. And that goes a long, long way. Yes, exactly. And that's something that I think sometimes with journalism nowadays, it seems like that's missed because it's all about it. Sometimes it seems like it's more about the reporter than it actually is about the story. I, I agree. You know, I am an optimist at heart and I really uh, have a hard time admitting uh, that we are living in troubled times right now and that our country and the world is more divided than ever. And there's a tendency of demonizing the other. Mm -hmm. And I think the easiest uh, people to demonize are those who live in the fringes. Um, and, and yet, with this show, one of the things, the takeaways that I really hope viewers will get is that no matter how far off into the fringes you go, even into sort of these black markets and under, underworlds, you will find, you'll be able to find some common ground. You'll be able to encounter people that are, you know, relatable and redeemable. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll realize, much like I did when I started this line of work over 15 years ago, that there's a lot more than that unites us than there is that separates us. And that's very important to know. I think it's a very important approach, not only as a journalist, but but in life in, in general. Yeah, and I agree with that so much because uh, like we, we have a lot of journalism students here at Muse TV and we try and teach them the right way to do things. And uh, this is definitely one of those shows I'm gonna teach show them, hey, <laughs> if you wanna get into hard news, this is what hard news is like. Mm -hmm. You have to really push the stories and find those stories. And uh, Nat Geo really gave you a lot of freedom, it looks like, to be able to do what you need to do. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. I can't think I can't thank them enough and I can't think of better partners to do this with. Um, 
You know, it's interesting. I sometimes get asked uh, why sort of what we, why Nat Geo and uh, how this partnership works. And I, you know, I was thinking about this the other day and thinking about just how much we actually have in common, Nat Geo and, and myself as a journalist and in terms of, uh, you know, this curiosity for the world and also this sort of exploration that runs in, in certainly in the brand in Agio, but also in my blood as a Portuguese as, um, national as well, uh, you know, coming from a large history of generations of explorers behind me, uh, Portuguese explorers. Uh, so, and they have been incredible to work with. They've uh, believed in this kind of journalism. They're one of the only ones still out there. Um, I mean, there are others as well. I'm not saying they're the only one, but they're certainly true believers in sort of boots on the ground, old school journalism. Uh, that is more important now than ever. I agree. I agree. And uh, do you ever look back at what you finished and everything that in this first season and go, I would like to go back and see what, what's going on with the current pandemic and really investigate what's happening with these fields? Absolutely. You know, we've actually been filming season two since July. Um, and it's even though season one is... Uh, starts premiering premieres tonight. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was fearful. We sort of finished production for season one in February, and we had that break when COVID hit. And I was in, and, and we decided it was time to go back on the road and start reporting. And I wasn't sure what I was going to found and how sort of black markets have been impacted. And what I found is that actually there's been an explosion of black markets during COVID. Mm -hmm. And it's not you know, surprising per se, because you notice that whenever there's an economic downturn, whenever people lose their jobs, they have to figure out a way to provide for their families. And uh, and that's what we have been seeing with black markets, which sort of made us realize that this is the most opportune and the most, uh, uh, you know, the best time um, to do a show like Traffic. Yeah, I agree, because it seems like with during this time, it, they, they, there seem, they seem to be able to adjust to what's going on better than anybody else in order to make sure the money comes oh. Yeah, and, and they can sometimes be us. That's one thing we can't forget is that it's easy for us to talk about them as if they're the other person. But you know, the more you listen to these stories and the more you, uh, you know, watch the show, you realize that it's not that difficult for us to walk in their shoes and for us to put ourselves in a position where that could have been us. Yeah, exactly. I and during the filming process for the season, for this upcoming season, so going through the pandemic, has there been changes in your mind to the way you're get, get, being cautious on the way you're delivering the story? And all of that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is already such a hard and challenging show to put together mm -hmm. in terms of the access and the sensitivities and the security and everything that's involved in it. And now just, you know, adding a layer of uh, COVID security to just making sure, absolutely sure that everybody stays safe. Um, you know, has been incredibly challenging, but we've been filming since July. We've managed to stay safe. We are very rigorous about our COVID protocols. We get tested almost on a weekly basis. You know, we all wear masks and have PPE on, but it's, um, it certainly hasn't been easy. Yeah, but but important, again, just realizing how these black markets have risen and exploded has uh, given us uh, impetus to continue. Exactly, and this show, like, I mentioned in the beginning, when I saw the sneak preview at TCA, I was like, I need to talk to Mariana about the show oh, because this, there was just something about it that you hadn't seen. I mean, I, I'm 45. I grew up with investigative journalism back in the 80s that was just on another level. And I look at it now and I'm just like, it's just, this is what, this is the type of flavor we need nowadays is a show like yours. And- Oh, uh, I so appreciate it. No so problem. Much. Is there anything you could say, since we do have a lot of college students who do watch Muse TV, who are journalists and want to be in the field, any advice that you could possibly give them? Absolutely. Persistence. Um, it is the most important lesson I've learned in journalism. You know, I uh, decided I wanted to be a journalist when I was 12 years old. Uh, when I graduated from school in Portugal, I applied to Columbia's journalism school. And uh, I knew I wanted to do journalism in the US and I knew that it was the best journalism school uh, out there. And I didn't get in the first year and I didn't get in the second year. And only the third year I flew to New York and I knocked on the Dean's door and I introduced myself. And after speaking with him for a long time, that year was the year I was accepted. And I remember it was one of the happiest 
uh, days of my life, but it also taught me my first big lesson in journalism, which is persistence. Just don't give up. If you have a dream, just go for it. And there's, you know, no one else is going to believe in, your, in you if you don't. Great. Mariana, thank you so much for being a part of Muse TV. I thank have you. been looking forward to this interview all year and I'm glad I got to talk to you about it. Looking forward to season two next year already, but that's on another subject. But uh, how can people find, follow you on social media? Oh, thank you. Mariana VZ, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, uh, Facebook is Mariana Van Zeller. Instagram and Twitter is Mariana VZ. Great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on Muse TV. We look forward to, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this in person for season two. I hope so. Thanks. Zoom is kind of weird. <laughs> but, is so weird. But we, 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 we will make it work. And uh, thank you so much again. Don't forget, uh, Traffic is on, premieres tonight. Uh, Nat Geo, check your local listings and times for when it's being aired. See you soon.